Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and in this video I'm going to explain how to find the last used cell in a worksheet with VBA. So there's a few different methods for doing this and a lot, it mostly depends on what your data looks like. In this particular uh, example here, this is a well-structured data set with no blank rows or columns so we can use the range.end method and that's what we're going to discuss in this first video. The range.find method will work for us when we have blanks anywhere in our data. And then the special cells method works uh, when you hit control end on the keyboard and it goes way down to some cell that you're not actually using. This will help you determine what that cell is and then there's some uh, code we can use to also delete those unused rows and columns. So let's go ahead and get started with the range.end method. So with range.end, it basically works like the control uh, up and down or left and right arrows on the keyboard. So if I press control down right now, that's going to take me to the very last cell on the worksheet here. And then if I press control up, that's going to take me to the next non-blank cell. So in that case, it's landed on uh, cell A9 here, which it would be the last row in our data set. So let's see how this works in VBA. I'm going to hit Alt F11 on the keyboard to open the VB editor. And I basically just have a blank procedure here. So we're going to use the range.end method. So range.end just has one argument here for the direction. And we basically have these different options where we could specify which direction we want the end method to search in or to move in to find that last non-blank cell. So for this case, we're going to use Excel up. Which basically, we want to start at the very bottom of the worksheet, the last row in the worksheet, and go up till we find the first non-blank cell. And that's how we'll find the, basically the last non-blank row using the end method. So now for the range property, we need to specify that last cell in the worksheet. So we can do that. There's a few ways to do that, but we can basically just say we want column A and then the uh, rows.count will return all, of, all the rows in the worksheet or the total number of rows in the worksheet. And we can evaluate this in the immediate window so I can show you exactly what I mean by this. So rows.count, if I hit enter there, is going to return this large number over 1 million and that's basically the last row or the total number of rows in the worksheet. So if I hit control down hour here, you'll see that's the same number that 1,048,000 is the same number if I jump back to VBA. Basically the same number here uh, for the count of rows in this particular worksheet. So now for this line of code, we just need to tell it what we want. In this case, we'll use the select method to select the cell. So now this line of code right here is basically going to do what we just did with the control up arrow. It's going to start at the very last cell and go up until it finds a non-blank cell. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. Hit F5 or the run button here. And you'll see over here that that's jumped up to the last non-blank cell in the worksheet. So in a case like this, when we have a nicely structured data set, this method is very easy to use because we could just go from the last row in the sheet all the way up to find the last used or the last non-blank cell. The major limitation here, though, is that we are only limited, or we're basically limited to one column or one row. So you see here, I'm referencing uh, column A. We can't reference all the set, all the rows. I'm sorry, all the columns on the worksheet. So, for example, if these two cells here uh, were blank, then that's going to select or return row seven, uh, when in fact the last used row here is row nine. So it's not going to work if you have some blanks in your uh, data set. And and I'll explain that when we talk about the range.find method, but I just want to point that out, that that is one major drawback. So let's move on, and we can also uh, find the last column with this same method. So again, we're going to use uh, the range.end method, and in this case, we're going to do to the left, so the option to the left, and that's basically what we want to do here, start all the way to the right side of the worksheet, the last column in the worksheet, and then move left. So I'm going to hit tab to select that and close it off. Now, with when we're st specifying the last column, we can actually use the cells property instead of the range property. And that will allow us to actually specify the last column and last row here. Or, I'm sorry, we're going to specify the first row. We're just going to use row one. And then for the column index, we're going to use columns.count. And so that'll return the total number of columns in the worksheet there. Then we're going to go from the end, basically the last column, and then go to the left until we find that first non-blank cell. 
And again, I'm just going to use the select method here, so we'll select that cell. I'm also going to comment out this first line of code here, just put an apostrophe in front of it, so we'll comment that out so it won't run that code. And now we'll, I'm going to hit F5 on the keyboard to run this, and you'll see it's selected cell uh, D1 here, which would be the last non-blank cell in this row. So going uh, from left to right, or I'm sorry, from right to left uh, through the columns to find that first non-blank cell in the row. Well, I said first non-blank, but it's actually the last non-blank cell in the row there. So, so far we've just been selecting that cell, but we might actually want to return the row or column number. So I have an example here where that does this. And basically what I've done here is just declared this uh, long type variable. So L row and L column uh, just represent variables. And then we can assign that variable to the last row or column using the range.in method. So this is the same method we just did, but instead of uh, using the select uh, method, we can actually use the return the row number using the row property. So again, if you just uh, type row here at the end instead of select, that's going to return the row number. And for the column, we can just select the column number. We're going to start from the right and go over to find that column. And then this message box will just display a message box showing us the last row and column number. So if I run this now, I'm going to hit F5 on the keyboard to run this. You'll see that our last row is 7 and our last column is D. And again, this is wrong because our last used, col or last used row is actually 9. But since we're only searching in uh, column 1 here, this finds uh, row 7 or this cell A7 as the last row. So again, this is why you might want to use the range.find method, and we're going to talk more about that in the next video. So I'll have this uh, workbook available for you to download so you can check out the code. So please feel free to leave a comment below with any questions. And also, don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter where you get more tips and tricks and videos like this. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.